it's really neat to me to think that Jesus took some time to actually explain to us what the kingdom of God is all about, and he gave these parables. A parable is simply a, a story, a natural story, that reveals a spiritual truth. And uh, it's kind of interesting that a lot of these parables that Jesus shared were agricultural because they lived in an agricultural society, so they made sense to the people that were there. And I wonder if, uh, if somebody would get me a glass of water. I always have water in case it keeps the sermon from being dry. <laughs> so let's pray and um, ask the Lord to open up our hearts to understand this parable, the parable of the weeds. Father, I ask you in Jesus' name to enlighten our hearts with these truths today. Not just that it would fill us with knowledge, but it would change us. It would change us to embrace the reality of your kingdom and what it means to you, what it means to your church, what it means to the world. I ask you for this in the name of Jesus. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. Matthew 13, verse 24. It says here, He put another parable before them, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field. I mean, how many of you know if you're a farmer and you have a field, you want to make sure you're planting good seed? You don't want to plant bad seed because you're looking for a harvest. You're looking for a crop to come up. And so this man sowed good seed in his field. But while his men were sleeping, it says the enemy came and sowed weeds. Man, that's a, what a bummer is that? You know, that you have this field prepared, you sow good seed, and all of a sudden you have an enemy that while your men are sleeping, he comes out and he sows weeds in that same field. And so it says in verse 26, when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds also appeared. And the servants of the master of the house came and said to him, Master, didn't you not sow good seed in your field? See, now they're, they're kind of questioning the master. I thought it was good seed that you sowed. You know, why are we seeing this field of weeds? We thought you were sowing good seed. How then does it have weeds, they asked. And so he said to them, an enemy has done this. And so the servant said to him, well, what do you want us to do? Do you want us to go and gather them? But he said, no. Lest in gathering the weeds, you root up the wheat along with them. That's, a, that's so important of a message. No. I mean, I'm sure that was a strange thing to, to a people who are given to agriculture. You know, why wouldn't you pull the weeds? Why wouldn't you get rid of the weeds? And he said, no, don't, don't take them out because you might pull the wheat also. And then he said in verse 30, let both grow together. That's also very important to what I'm saying this morning. Let both grow together, the wheat and the weeds. Let them grow together, he said, until the harvest. And at the harvest time, I will tell the reapers to gather the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but then gather the wheat into my barn. Now, if you'll slip down to verse 36. Then he left the crowds, and he went into the house, and his disciples came to him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds. You know, sometimes we call this the parable of the, of the wheat and the tares, but they, they called it the parable of the weeds. And I think the reason why they called it the parable of the weeds is they didn't really understand why, why did Jesus treat these weeds in this manner. It seems strange. Tell us, Lord, what is the, 
What's the story of these weeds? And he answered, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. That's Jesus. So picture this. Jesus has seed, and he's sowing it into the world. So the Son of Man is the one who sows the good seed. The field is the world. You know, sometimes when you hear the parable of the tares and the wheat, uh, you hear it maybe described as maybe bad people within the church or something like that. But he's saying here the field really isn't the church. The field is the world. It's the world he's talking about. The field is the world. And the good seed is the sons of the kingdom. How many here are a son of the kingdom? Let me see your hand. You are the good seed. So Jesus has taken you and me, all of us, and millions of others around the world, said, you're good seed, I'm going to sow you into the world. You know, last time we talked about the parable of the, uh, the sower. And in that parable, the seed was the word of God, if you remember. And the field seemed to indicate it was the hearts of people and how different ones received the word of God. And some fell by the wayside and some fell on rocky soil and some fell among the weeds. But then he said, there is this good soil which they receive the seed and they produce fruit 30, 60, and 100 fold. And I think it's those, it's those that Jesus takes and then sows into the world. It's the fruitful ones. So Jesus takes people who've received the seed of the word and says, now I'm going to take you and sow you into the world. And how many of you know, what is it that a farmer looks for when he sows seed? Does anybody know? What is it? Good soil. He looks for good soil, but what, what's he looking for long term? He's looking for harvest. He's looking for a harvest. So if you are the sons of the kingdom, Jesus is sowing you into the world. He's looking for a harvest. He's looking for fruit that comes out of our life. So the sower is the son of man. The seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one. You know, sometimes you'll hear people say everybody is a child of God, and it's biblically speaking, that's not really the case. I mean, everybody is created by God, and in that sense, they have this relationship with him as their creator. But there's like, I think, three different times in the Bible that people were called sons of the devil. And that's what, that's what the evil one brings and sows into the world what are called sons of the evil one. These are people. The weeds are the sons of the evil one, just like the good seed are the sons of the kingdom. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the close of the age. We're not there yet. We're moving toward it. We're a day closer than we were yesterday. And we don't know exactly when that day is coming, but we're moving toward a day that he calls the close of the age, the harvest, the end. And he says in verse 40, just as the weeds are gathered and burned with fire, so will it be at the close of the age. When? The close of the age. Not before that. See, the tares or the weeds are dealt with at the close of the age. Not before. Guess what? If the, if the weeds had been dealt with before the close of the age, how many of you may have been pulled up as a tear? Let me see your hand. I'm glad that Jesus said, let them grow together. So it says here, the weeds are gathered and burned with fire, and so will it be at the close of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all causes of sin. See, in the kingdom now, there are weeds as well as wheat. 
But there's a day coming when the angels will come, and it says they will gather out of his kingdom all the causes of sin and all lawbreakers and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, and then the righteous one will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let him hear. Now, I got a little, a little chart I'll put up really next here. And this is it's pretty simple. It just kind of tells you, you know, who are the characters in this story and what it represents. And Jesus gave us all this. this who's the sower? What's the field? What's the good seed? Who are the weeds? Who's the enemy? What's the harvest? Who are the reapers? And what is the eternal destiny of weeds and the eternal destiny of good seed? You know, our church, Alliance Christian Center, actually started because of this parable. You know, years and years ago, there was a man in Anchorage, Alaska, who was seeing many people come to Jesus. Many people were receiving the seed of God's word and becoming fruitful. And they began to pray and say to the Lord, what should I do with these people? All this good seed, what do we do with it? And the Lord took the elders to this parable and he said, the seed are the children of the kingdom and take them and sow them into the world. And so they began at that time to take teams of people and send them out to start churches. One here, one there, another here. I think all told there was a, right around 100 churches sent out over maybe a 15-year period, 15 to 20-year period, uh, mostly in the United States, but some in foreign countries. But it was this parable that inspired that direction to take the good seed of the kingdom and to plant it into the world. And that's why we came to Alliance. We came here as a response to that vision to go and plant, to be fruitful. I think that's awesome. But the thing that was really a question to these brothers when they came to Jesus, when they came away from the crowds, they said, Lord, explain to us the parable of the seeds or the weeds. What is it? What's up with these weeds? Because it doesn't make sense to us what you're saying. So I want to look back at verse 27. If you have your Bible open, I don't think I have the slide up for that. But I just want to look at a couple of the questions that these guys were asking Jesus, specifically about the weeds. Because that's what I want to spend my time with today, is how does Jesus expect us to relate to the weeds? So the first question they asked there in verse 27, if you see it, it says, the servants of the master of the house came and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have weeds? And I just wrote down on my notes here that it's not unusual when people experience difficulties or hardships or maybe evil things being done to ask if God is so good, how could this ever happen? Lord, I thought you planted only good seed. Why are these weeds? What are these weeds here? Weeds are the, weeds are the sons of the evil one. They're, they're opposed to the things of God. They come against the things of God. They're against everything the Lord stands for. They're pawns in the hand of the enemy. And maybe we were one at one time. Paul the Apostle certainly was. But the Lord's answer was, an enemy did this. I think sometimes the Lord gets blamed for things that really should fall into the plate of the devil. And that was Jesus' simple answer. A, an enemy has done this. It's not me. I've, I only sow good seed. And what you see among these weeds here, that's, that's the work of the enemy. It's not really me, it's, it's the enemy. And I just want you guys to know that we do have an enemy. His name is Satan. 
He hates everything about Jesus. He hates the love of God. He hates the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. He hates the resurrection of Christ. He hates the church of Jesus Christ. He came to kill, to steal, and destroy. And as I said before, he does use people to thwart or try to thwart the work of God's kingdom. We see that in the early church when their persecution arose and that persecution continues even today. In other parts, not so much here in America, but other parts of the world, many people are being are, are killed, martyred for their faith in Jesus Christ. There are still weeds that are growing among the wheat. Now, I think probably most of us, if we see that happening, our first thought is, well, let's get rid of the weeds. If the weeds are causing so much problem, let's just get rid of them. And so they asked the question, do you want us to go and gather them? We'll get rid of them for you, Lord. And you know, through the history of the church, we've seen times where that was an attempt in the name of the Lord to try to rid the world of evil. But Jesus said, no, I don't want you to, I don't want you to get rid of them. Doesn't that seem strange to you? The enemy planting weeds among the wheat? He said, no. He said, let them both grow together. It just seems so strange. It probably seems strange to maybe some of us. I think, I think sometimes the church of Jesus Christ, I'm speaking globally now, gets a little bit off track because we, we, we feel like it's our job to remove evil from the world, and it really isn't. It's not our job to remove evil from the world. Jesus said they will be here till the harvest. The only way you can remove evil from the world is to turn a weed into wheat. To turn a weed into wheat. <laughs> you know? I think that's probably part of what Jesus meant when he said, if you start pulling up weeds, you might be pulling up some wheat too because weeds can become wheat. I did. How many of you were a weed at one time and you became a wheat? The Bible tells us that you were sometimes darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. The Bible says that you were one time an enemy of God. Now you are the friend of God. Don't tear up the tares. Don't tear up the wheat because you might be pulling up, or don't tear up the weeds, you might pull the wheat with it. I'm glad that Jesus didn't send those guys out to pull up the weeds before I got saved. Because, thank the Lord, I'm a, I'm a piece of wheat now. You know? <laughs> It's always been my dream, my vision for my life. Be a kernel of wheat. But I think sometimes we feel like it's our job to rid the world of evil. We get mad about laws and policies and politics and school systems and education. All these things that are that are there. They're they're the weeds. They're the they're the enemy infiltrating the kingdom. But Jesus said, leave them. Let them grow together. When you look up the word, let them both grow together, the word let is a really interesting word in the Greek language. It means, it's the same word as actually translated as to forgive. Let them grow together. That's the same word when Jesus hung on the cross and said, Father, forgive them. Let them, let them. Release them from an obligation. Let them, let them go. Forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. I wonder how many people that we look at as the weeds that are the enemy of God 
just don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're doing. They're, they're, they're deceived by the enemy. The Bible tells us that their, their eyes are blinded from the gospel by Satan. They don't know what they're doing. And so here we are as God's people, and maybe we're involved in tearing them out like a weed when there's maybe a different approach, a better approach. Let them grow. Think about Jesus, how he, how he reacted to the woman who was caught in adultery. I mean, it was way different than those people that brought her and threw her down on his feet, wasn't it? They were trying to tear the weed out. There's this evil among us, Lord. Stoner. The law says stoner. What do you say? And Jesus, he didn't deny the law said that. He just knelt down and began to write some things on the sand, and he, then he stood up and said, hey, if, if you're without sin, go ahead and throw the stone. And everybody walked away. And then he turned to the woman and he said, where are your accusers? Because to stone somebody, you had to have two or three witnesses, accusers, people who would lay their hand on them and say, yes, they should be stoned. And they were all gone. And so Jesus, he didn't really violate the law. He just basically removed the criteria for stoning. And he told this woman, go and sin no more. You know what he was doing? Letting her grow. Letting her. Let them grow together. And I think you see this heart of a Pharisee in other places in the scripture. The Pharisees didn't have room. Remember the guy that was down there praying one time and he said, Lord, I'm glad I'm not like this man, like other tax collectors. Because I tithe and I do this and I do that. I'm glad I'm not like this man. See, they're, they're just like looking at a weed over there thinking the world would be a better place if they weren't even here. But what if that weed becomes wheat? And they become your brother or sister in Christ. And you stand in the, in the sanctuary of the Lord and you worship God together. That's what happened to the Apostle Paul. He was out to destroy the work of the kingdom. And Jesus saved him. And I'm telling you what, all of you who love the New Testament should be glad that that weed became wheat. Because so much of what we read and believe from the New Testament perspective was written by that, that weed, the Apostle Paul. Let them grow together, is what Jesus said. It's not my job to go clean the world of evil. And I don't make that my mission. Our mission is to go and make disciples of all nations. That's our mission. And in the making of disciples, weeds become wheat. Darkness becomes light. Enemies become friends. That's how it happens. I'd like to look at a scripture in 2 Peter 3. Verse 9, it says, The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some men count slowness, but he is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. This is a scripture that talks about the promise of Jesus returning, the second coming of Christ, which is the close of the age he talked about above there. And they're saying, well, people always are saying, Where, where's the promise of his coming? You said Jesus is coming back. Look, year after year after year, he's not back. Where is this promise? And his answer is, he's not slow to fulfill his promise, but he's patient. And why? Why is Jesus waiting? The answer is there. Can you see it? 
He is not wishing that anyone should perish. That's why he waits. That's why he let, let them grow together. Don't pull them up. Let them grow together, not wanting anyone to perish. That's the heart of Jesus. Yeah, they will reject him. Many will in that day. That's why he's waiting. That's why evil still grows in our world, because he's waiting. You might say, well, Lord, just take the evil out of the world. No, because some of them, some of them will be saved. Some of them will come. Some of them will repent. And I'm waiting, and I'm waiting. But the fact that, I guess the, 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 the other side of the coin is that the longer he waits, the more evil escalates. The Bible even talks about that, how in the last days, terrible times will come and wickedness will increase more and more. So what's our job? Get rid of the weeds? No, it is to make disciples. To make disciples of all nations. There's a scripture, I don't think I have it on the notes there, but it's Ecclesiastes 8. 11, it says this, it says, when judgment is not executed speedily, men's hearts are fully set to do evil. And the idea is that we can live in a world of wickedness and we don't see the judgment of God. We don't see the Lord responding quickly to evil that's in the world. And I'm telling you, we could all sit down today and write down a list of all the evil things that are happening in our country and other places of the world and say, well, this demands that God should bring judgment. And judgment will come. Judgment will come. But in his time, we don't bring the judgment of God. It's in his time. And so people see this getting away with evil, and there is no judgment executed speedily and so their hearts become set to continue to do evil. And it just grows and grows and grows. But the thing you need to know, I guess, as I close up this morning is, there is an eternal judgment. Now, I'm not talking here today about universalism. Not everybody's going to be saved. He tells us here, that there will be a judgment, that angels will come, and they will take out of, out of his kingdom every cause of sin and all lawbreakers. And he will gather them to be burned. I believe that the Bible teaches there is an eternity in hell where people will, will suffer in hell forever. And trust me, there's a lot of teaching out there today that goes against that. And, and, you know, you need to be getting into the Word of God to form your uh, understanding of this basic doctrine of eternal judgment. It's a basic doctrine that all of us need to understand. You know, it seems so remote to us. We don't think of it often. But there's a story in the Bible about a guy who was a rich man. He died. He went to hell, and he was burning. He was in pain and suffering. And you know, the only thing that was on his mind, first he wanted some water, and that was impossible to give him. But he said, please send somebody back to my brothers and tell them to repent so they don't end up here with me. And it was that that maybe motivates us or should motivate us that all the weeds that are out there will one day, if they don't become wheat, will be gathered and burned. He tells us here the angels are going to come and take them out. You know what? I was reading in the, in the scripture, and I can't remember where it's at now. I'll get you the reference on it, but I think it might have been the, uh, the Assyrians. And there was a, an angel, the angel of the Lord, singular, came and killed the enemy in one night, 185,000 people. So you think about, oh, it's just going to be an angel coming to get him up. It's not a little Cupid. 
with, you know, heart wings and a little arrow. We're talking about the angel of the Lord. It's going to be a day of, it's going to be a horrendous day of judgment. But until then, the Lord is saying, let them grow together. Let them grow together. Because some will turn. Some will repent. But that means that we who are the seed need to be reproducing. We're planted to produce. We're planted to produce. And God may use you and your testimony in the gospel of Jesus Christ to help a weed become wheat. A few weeks ago, I was witnessing, and I walked into, I knocked on a door of a house, and it was a young, a young person that came to the door. And um, I could tell that they were in the midst of, of becoming a transgender. And it was, I really couldn't, I honestly could not tell if this was a, a woman or a man. I could not tell. It was, looked like part man, part woman. I mean, he had, he had whiskers, but a high voice, had some makeup, was growing. Uh, <laughs> things. <laughs> things that women have. And um, you know what happened when he came to the door? I loved him. I loved him. I said, Here is, here's a weed. He doesn't know what's going on. doesn't know. He's been deceived by the enemy. And it wasn't my job to rip him out. I shared the gospel. And I know as I was sharing the gospel, he became uncomfortable and just began to cover himself like this and uh, listen. And he's open to talking some more. He didn't give his heart to Jesus, but he's open to talk some more. But that's what I think he's talking about when he says, let them grow together. Because I think there are, there are certain sins that get un, under our own crow, or our craw, or whatever you want to call it. Get, get, what is, what's the word I want? Get in our craw, or somehow they bother us, and we want to rid the world of them. Maybe it's the abortionist. Maybe it's the child abuser, maybe it's the murderer, maybe it's the rapist, maybe it's the transgender person, maybe it's the homosexual. But I think sometimes in the church we, we just have this feeling like, Lord, I thought you put good seed out here, Let's, let us go tear them out. And he's saying, no, let them grow, let them grow together, because there is a day of judgment coming. And that's, that's the Lord's prerogative, to send his angels in the meantime, Jesus is not at all threatened that the church cannot thrive while there is evil in the world. The church can thrive in the midst of an evil world. Even as evil grows and increases, the church can thrive. It has the life of Jesus. I mean, Jesus lived in a day when their community was uh, occupied by Rome. Wasn't the best of circumstances, was it? The church can thrive in an evil world. So I pray that you will. I pray that you will see this parable as a beautiful picture of the kingdom of God and how it can thrive in the midst of an evil world. And that our task is not to rid the world of evil. Our task is to make disciples, and see weeds transformed into wheat. So I'd like to have you stand with me if you would. So we're going to have a, a time for prayer at the end. If you want to come up for prayer, uh, those of you who like to pray for others can come up. But if you're here and you do have a further need for healing, as, as was expressed in these words of knowledge here today, uh, please feel free to come up. Come up and we'll pray with you. We'll lay hands upon you and trust that God will do his work in your life. And um, 
Here's a, my questions as we close. One is, are you weed or wheat? What are you? What kind of seed? You're either a child of the kingdom or you're a child of the enemy. It's one or the other. There's not really a middle ground. And if you're weed today, you can become wheat. It just comes by surrender to Jesus. If you're wheat, then I would like to ask you the question, how are you going to treat the weeds? How are you going to treat them going forward? And if you are wheat, will you reproduce? Reproduce. Share the love of Jesus Christ with those around you who don't know him, who are lost without him, who have nothing but an eternal destination of being burned. And maybe God will use you to help see a life transformed. Turn to Jesus.